As well as our brilliant hardware reviews, we like to every once in a while do a featured build on the channel, which means we take a bunch of components from one company, build a system and showcase the products. One company that we've not featured on the channel for a while is AlphaCool. So we thought this featured build would be the perfect opportunity to build a fully custom water-cooled system and see what AlphaCool has got to offer in 2024. So the main reason for this video is to take a look at the new AlphaCool Apex Stealth fan Alpha Cool reached out to us recently and asked if we wanted to take a look at these fans. I know they've had a lot of publicity recently, some good, some not so good. I don't want to get involved in any of the argument over performance. So I'm going to take a look at these fans purely on an aesthetics and how easy they are to build inside a system. So that's the point I'm looking at with these fans. I'll show you some thermal performance of the system when it's finished. But I'm focusing mainly on the aesthetics of these fans and building a fully water-cooled system using them. So these are the infamous Apex Stealth metal fans from AlphaCool. You can buy these now from places like Overclockers in the UK. Individually, they're priced at $26.99. You can also buy them directly from AlphaCool. But if you do, we're talking euros, about 30 euros each for these fans. They are available in a couple of different versions. So there's the standard version that runs at 400 to 2000 RPM, or there's the Apex Stealth power fan version, which is the ones that we have, and these run up to 3000 RPM. They're available also in different colors. So the die cast zinc material of the fan frame, they come in either this matte black finish, a chrome finish, white or gold. With Apex Stealth, the entire fan is completely decoupled from the full metal frame. The fan impeller features a closed frame design and blades optimized for maximum airflow and high pressure. Apex Stealth fans are equipped with a six pole motor, a PWM speed range of 400 to 2000 RPM, a zero RPM mode, and up to 3000 RPM as a power fan variant. So these fans have both high static pressure and high airflow. The maximum airflow is 47 cubic feet per minute and the maximum static pressure is 2.09 millimeters H2O. And they're also four pin PWM controlled, so they have standard four pin PWM motherboard headers. They're actually daisy chainable fans, so you can link fans together and then just run a single cable to either a motherboard header or a fan controller, which should reduce the amount of cables in the system and make cable management slightly easier than fans that aren't daisy chainable and have all individual cables. The main feature of these fans is the metal outer body and the internal fan is completely decoupled from this metal body, which is said to make them very quiet. I think they have a maximum noise level of around 26 decibels. Because they have both high static pressure and high maximum airflow, this should be good for using as airflow fans just on the case as like an exhaust or as an intake or on radiators. And these power fan versions that run up to 3000 RPM with that high RPM, they should be good on thick radiators with a real dense fin arrangement. And because this is an Alpha Cool theme build, we obviously have a load of other Alpha Cool hardware to build into the system. The graphics card is going to be water cooled. So we've got this Alpha Cool Ice Block GPX full cover water block, copper cold plate with an acrylic top. There's some RGB lighting in here. There's an RGB strip in there. So that should illuminate the whole of the acrylic part. As you can see, this is for an AMD Radeon card on the back. It comes with an aluminium backplate, just in an all black with a little Alpha Cool logo on there. 
So that looks good. That'll uh, go into the system just right. Radiators are these Alpha Cool Nexus XT45. So they are a full copper radiator. 45 millimeters thick. These are the 360s. Planning on using two 360s. The great thing I like about Alpha Cool radiators is they have multiple ports. So they're on each side of the radiator, on the end, on the tanks. And there's also one on the bottom on the tank at the other side. And the great thing about having those ports is obviously you've not limited to where you put the tube in or how you route the tube in. You've got various options of coming in from the front or coming in from the side. Sometimes also these bottom ports are good to use as a drain or even to use as like a, if you've got it upright with the tubes at the bottom, it's good to use that as a, like a bleed port to bleed air out of the system too. So they're the Alpha Cool Nexus XT45 radiators. This is a bit of a giveaway um, of the case that I'm going to be using because this is a core distro plate from Alpha Cool and it's for the Lian Lee O11D Evo and Evo XL series. I guess it doesn't give away completely which case I'm using because there are that many different O11Ds, but this is a real chunky distro plate. That's at least 30 millimeters thick. And I like the ports. They've got these like inserts in there. I guess they are nickel plated brass inserts. So there's no fear of stripping the threads on the acrylic yet like you have with some other distro plates. It's a really nice looking distro plate, that really chunky. It weighs an absolute ton. So that should look good in the system. That's also got some RGB lighting. So that should all illuminate with RGB lighting. CPU block is this Alpha Cool core CPU block compatible with both AMD and Intel platforms. So you get mounting kits for AMD and Intel with this block. Unlike some others that you have to buy a completely different block depending on which platform you're using. I like this arrangement of these diagonal ports. That's a bit different to what you used to see in either with horizontal or vertical ports. And it also has some RGB lighting with this kind of line around the perimeter of the block going around those inlet and outlet ports. It's a nickel plated copper coal plate. And again, this has got some weight to it. So it feels like good quality. Some other bits and accessories I'll be using. So we've got these Alpha Cool flow meters. Again, these are all acrylic with an inlet and outlet port on there. Good for giving you an indication that water is actually circulating through the system. These are also illuminated with RGB. That looks like it can also be daisy chained. I'll be using at least one of those in the system. The fittings, so for the main compression fittings, I'm using these Alpha Cool iZapfen Pro fittings. So these are three piece fitting. As you can see there. Your tubing goes into there. There's an O-ring for sealing there. You obviously slide this rubber olive over the tubing and then the top screws on to create a compression fitting. Got plenty of those to use in the system. They also come with some tube inserts to keep the tubing rigid. For the other hardware in the system, so the motherboard is this Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. Obviously that's an AMD board. It's gonna be based on an entirely AMD system. CPU for this is an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X. And sticking with the AMD theme, we've got this Sapphire Radeon RX 7900 XTX Nitro Plus card. It does seem like a shame to remove all this cooler and install the water block. This is a really nice looking card on both sides. Even the back plate looks really nice on this. Love the look of that card, but we are going to be taking the whole cooler off and installing the water block because it is a full custom water cooled system, including CPU and GPU. The memory in the system is this G-Skill Trident Z5. It's a 64 gigabyte, so two 32 gigabyte modules, DDR5 6400 mega transfers per second. For storage, it's just a single M.2 drive. I'll be using the Corsair MP7 one terabyte PCIe Gen 5 M.2 NVMe drive. Power supply for the system is this Silverstone Decathlon series DA1000R. It's a cybernetics gold rated, fully modular, and it's PCIe 5 and ATX3. As I mentioned earlier, the distro plate is for the O11D Evo. The case that we're going to be using to install all this lot into is the O11D Evo RGB. We've reviewed various different versions of the O11D series on the channel. I don't think we've featured the RGB version of the Evo before. And I know for a fact I've not built a system in it, so I'm looking forward to that. The plan is to run a 360 rad on the floor, a 360 in the roof with the Apex Stealth fans 
and we'll have to run the distro play on the side mount because that's how it's designed so the alpha cool core distro plate will go there probably another apex stealth fan in the rear of the case can't wait to get on with this build so uh, let's get on with it and see how it turns out
So the build's complete. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think it looks brilliant. You will have seen from the time lapse, I originally was going to fill the system with some clear coolant and just run the RGB lighting in blue for like an alpha cool theme. But I didn't like how the satin finished tubing looked with that clear coolant in. So I've just added some blue, some alpha cool blue to the coolant. I think it looks a lot better with everything blue. I had to make a couple of minor modifications to things. So the radiators and the distro plate, I had to make some spaces just to get those fitted into the case correctly. The distro plate isn't technically designed for this Evo RGB. It's designed for the standard Evo and the Evo XL. There must be some difference between the standard Evo and the RGB on that side radiator fan mount because the distro plate didn't really line up very well on that side fan mount. The pump and the drain on the back was contacting parts of the fan mount frame. So what I did actually was I found some Intel LGA 1700 CPU cooler mount. So the standoffs, they actually screwed into the distro plate and then I just used the thumb screws that came with the CPU cooler mounting kit to attach the distro plate to the fan bracket on the side of the case there. That worked really well. So if you are thinking of buying this distro plate and using it in this Evo RGB, that is a good solution. But you can just make up maybe some 3D printed spacers or something like that, but you will need longer screws. The screws that come with the distro plate, if you make spacers, won't quite be long enough. The great thing with that distro plate on that fan mount is that you can adjust the height of it so that either the GPU or the CPU tubes line up perfectly. The GPU tubes did line up perfectly. I'd use some 90 degree angles there. I tried to keep the bends to a minimum in the tubing tried to keep everything looking as symmetrical as possible. I think it's worked out really well. The only thing that didn't really line up was one of the inlet ports on the CPU block. I had to put one of those rotary offsets on just to move it up about seven or eight millimeters and then it would line up with the distro plate here. But it looks okay, it's not uh, too out of place, that rotary offset in there. The CPU block in silver might have looked better in black with RGB, but there are some silver-ish accents on the motherboard and some bits on the graphics card and some other bits in the system that are silver so I think that looks okay. The radiators also needed spacing out slightly because the blanks that go in the ports on the other side of the radiator they were also contacting with the metal work on these removable fan brackets from the case so what I found actually was the drive mounts that come with the O11D Evo RGB they come with some rubbers and a screw that's got a bare shank on it and they spaced it out perfectly they were a great option to use those on the radiator just spaced it out enough so that the blanks didn't get in the way and I was able to then adjust the radiator into position so everything lined up perfectly with the distro plate. So if you are thinking of using some of this alpha cool stuff in this O11D Evo RGB a couple of helpful tips there that will make things easier for you but it all lines up lovely I like how the distro plate keeps everything looking pretty symmetrical and I'm really impressed with how it's turned out the quality of these parts I can't argue with it they all feel good quality there's a lot of weight the graphics card GPU block that weighs a ton the distro plate's nice and chunky it looks good in the system when it's installed maybe the RGB lighting could be improved slightly on the distro plate you can quite clearly see the individual LEDs if Alpha Cool could find some way to diffuse that make that look a little better the three apex stealth fans on the bottom radiator they're acting as intake so pulling some cool air in through the radiator into the system the top three on the radiator they're exhaust and i've also got an apex stealth rear exhaust fan currently the fans are all fixed to around a thousand rpm they're quiet at that noise level you can just hear them over ambient noise in this room but it's not distracting at all a thousand rpm you could cope with that noise level especially if you're using this system for gaming and you're wearing a headset. I've been running the 3D Mark Speedway benchmark for about 30 minutes now and the GPU temperature sat at just under 50 degrees C. So it all seems to be working very nicely. If you are thinking of picking up some alpha cool stuff and doing a similar build to this, it's all good quality stuff, feels nice, seems to work well in a case like this O11D RGB. I'm quite pleased with how the systems turned out overall and hopefully we'll see more of alpha cool on the channel throughout this year. So that's the Alpha Cool Apex Stealth build finished. Let me know what you think of the build in the comment section. If you've enjoyed watching the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, 
you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.